Welcome to another episode of Crossfire Faith and Gaming, uh, your source for gaming news and devotionals and uh, interesting conversations. Today we've got some stuff going on with the Nintendo Direct. We're going to talk Cyberpunk 2077. We're going to talk about some Boba Fett and uh, we're going to bring you some of the news. So let's get into it in just a minute after our intro. up everybody and again welcome to crossfire faith and gaming podcast i am one of your hosts russ dornish alongside my co-host the reverend david petty Hey, everybody. It's great to have you with us. A quick note. Uh, we just want to say thank you to our Patreon uh, sponsors. We've got a few su- uh, subscribers right now that are helping us to make ends meet and helping to support our podcast. And you, too, could be one of those people. We've got multiple tiers. And if you give us more than $10, we'll mention your name here on the podcast. Uh, so to do that, go to patreon.com slash church for gamers. And that's F-O-R, church for gamers. And you can support us if you like the content we produce hopefully if you're listening it's because you like it um so let's get into today's news we've got uh kind of a slow news week but we do have a few things uh, maybe not a slow news week if you're a nintendo fan uh nintendo direct we had some game reveals came to us on february 9th and so uh russ what did you think about some of the games that were shown in the nintendo direct what are you most excited about and uh i I don't know is anything really pique your interest Uh, Well, I mean, you know, obviously slower news cycle. We didn't have some massive acquisitions like we've had the last couple of weeks, Uh, but the Nintendo Direct kind of came out of nowhere. Uh, It was actually a heavy, uh, fully packed Nintendo Direct that had a lot of heavy hitters um, to name a few that I know people, you know, love to talk about. Uh, We got some Splatoon 3, some Kirby Forgotten Lands, new Mario Kart 8 uh, booster packs for courses. They're bringing back like the original Wii courses and some of the other older Mario Kart uh, courses. Uh, Xenoblade Chronicles 3, uh, No Man's Sky was announced. A bunch of older games coming to the Switch, uh, like The Force Awakens, uh, Earthbound, of course, coming to uh, the backwards compatibility area with Nintendo Online. Um, Just a bunch. Portal 1 and 2 coming as well. Uh, MLB The Show coming to the Switch for the first time. My biggest biggest announcement that I just just, I was so shocked that they announced it uh, because I didn't think we'd ever see this again. But we're getting a brand new Mario Strikers, uh, Mario Strikers Battle League. If you guys have not played Mario Strikers on the GameCube, oh my gosh, even if you're not a soccer fan, it's so much fun. Um, just super power ups and all sorts of crazy things that you get from the Mario sports games. So that's kind of an exciting one. Now, there was another game that was announced that did make Dave go a little bit nuts. Uh, Dave, what was your exciting moment from the Nintendo Direct and why are you so excited for it? Yeah, and, and just to echo what you were saying, uh, the Nintendo Direct literally caught me uh, unaware. I was in the middle of, of texting Russ, and then all of a sudden I looked down. It says, hey, uh, you know, Facebook noticed that you follow Nintendo, and there's a Nintendo Direct happening live. Do you want to check it out? And I said, oh, that's interesting. And I popped it up, and of course it was right in the middle of this announcement, which got me very excited. The reason that I bought a Wii back in the day in the first place uh, is that they're bringing Switch sports so uh the thing that everybody loved about the wii the fact that it was more than just a hardcore game console uh it it brought wii sports to the family it brought wii bowling and wii tennis and wii golf uh and wii sword fighting and then the wii sports resort which brought frisbee and i I loved wii sports so when they came out with the switch and they were talking about the fact that the joy cons could do all this motion stuff and i was very excited and they came out with the switch and it was like but where where are the sports (laughs) where i'm don't have any sports so i'm very excited to see the switch sports coming soon to the switch uh starting off with like the sword fighting uh volleyball is a new addition badminton also a new addition and then they're going to have an update later that brings golf and uh what's the other one i don't know but anyway lots of the sports very exciting oh soccer which i i predict people are going to kick their coffee tables <laughs> or, uh, TVs. People are gonna, or kick their TVs or their TV it's consoles or their friends. Uh, it's going to be an interesting news cycle with that one. But yeah, really excited about the Switch Sports. I think I'm also pretty excited about uh, Mario Kart 
8 Deluxe Booster Course uh, coming out there. I think everybody loves Mario Kart. Uh, side note, if you haven't played It Takes Two, there are some fun Mario Kart references in that game. Um, <laughs> but that's a, a whole different thing. But for me, uh, I was most excited about the fact that uh, – we have switch sports coming and as an avid player of MLB, the show, I just think it's great that that game is expanding to even more platforms. Last year, it came from PlayStation to PlayStation and Xbox now PlayStation and Xbox and switch. So hopefully more players, more competition and more people enjoying playing a really good baseball sim. Yeah, no, I, I, like I said, very surprising, lots of great announcements, great direct for Nintendo, way to just hit it, especially with the news from Xbox and PlayStation the last couple weeks. Uh, Nintendo needed something to knock it out of the park, and what better way to knock it out of the park than announce some amazing games that make people super excited. So, speaking yeah. of exciting... And, and Nintendo can't really play the, the acquisition game and go no, out and spend, you know, $70 billion dollars buying somebody. No. <laughs> They're not even worth $70 billion, but ne- never, never Nintendo. Never going to do it um but speaking of exciting uh or lack of exciting considering how this was originally uh accepted uh there is some cyberpunk 2077 news that was revealed today uh as of recording 214 uh, and that is because uh cd project red will be having an event a streaming event tomorrow tuesday february 15th and also appearing today in uh, people's libraries was Cyberpunk 77 being uh, optimized and ready to go for Xbox Series X and S, along with uh, back in January, a uh, new edition of Cyberpunk 2077 did show up in the PlayStation Network for a little bit. So all signs are pointing to we might finally be getting the next gen version of Cyberpunk 2077, uh, and it could be announced as early as tomorrow, with some people speculating that if they do announce it, it will go live to tomorrow with the announcement which kind of goes along with this leak uh dave i know that you never actually jumped into cyberpunk you got it you have cyberpunk you have never played it and aren't that's, you that's just not entirely true that's okay. not entirely true okay uh, i'll have to pull up my steam library here and see i'm pretty sure i've logged two or three entire hours in this game uh according to okay According to my Steam library, it says I've played for 16 hours. And and that may just be that I like loaded it and sat in the menu screen. I guarantee I have not put 16 hours. Maybe <laughs> maybe 1.6. I don't know. Somehow it thinks I've played 16 hours, but uh yeah, I, I I've just barely gotten into it. Uh, and part of that was I was really waiting for the next gen updates. Uh, not that, I, I, you know, I realized I really like playing first person games on a mouse and keyboard with my PC. Um, don't like it as much as with the controller. Controller feels like I need to play it third person. I don't know. I'm just weird. But, um, I think it's great to see that this game is actually hopefully getting the next gen updates. I think a lot of people uh, when it first came out, were surprised it was not released for next gen uh, or current gen now. Uh, and I think the other thing is that a lot of people were saying uh, coming after the matrix uh, demo, they're saying, man, this is what cyberpunk could have been had they actually developed it for next gen in the first place. So I'm excited to see maybe cyberpunk redeeming itself and, um, and maybe while they're at it, if they're going to make an announcement, uh, maybe CD Projekt Red will talk about when their uh, Witcher 3 update is coming out. Yeah, I hope that that comes along as well. Um, I'm excited for this. I've heard some good things about Cyberpunk getting more updates and becoming more stable. Um, I ran into a few glitches that actually stopped me from getting the Platinum Trophy. I did beat the game. So after that happened, I was like, you know what? I'm going to put the game away. When it comes to next gen, I'll maybe go for that Platinum Trophy again and see if it works. Uh, but for now, uh, I am not. I, I we'll, we'll see. I'm super excited for the Witcher next gen upgrade. I've been playing the Witcher recently, as I've, I've said on the podcast. Uh, so I'm excited to get that next gen, but we still have a ways to wait for that one. I think um, to kind of end the news, since we are light on news, let's kind of look at some of the releases coming this month uh, and some games that have already been released and what is still to come. So um, already released Sifu. I've uh, been seeing great reception to it. However, people have been saying it is extremely, extremely difficult. And the developers listen to people and they're coming out with new accessibility modes, including uh, new difficulty to help people play that game. Um, so I'm interested to see what that looks like. 
Um, another game that already came out last week, uh, Dying Light 2. I've already put, I think, 35 hours into Dying Light 2. Um, so I'm about halfway through the game. Uh, enjoying it. It's a lot of fun. The parkour is pretty good. Uh, if you like the first Dying Light, I say definitely pick it up. Um, obviously, uh, rated M for a mature game. Lots of gore and violence and cursing in there. Um, so just an FYI out there for parents who are listening. Uh, definitely not an appropriate game for younger children. Uh, and then, of course, this week, the big release this Friday, Horizon Forbidden West. Uh, Dave, I know that you're picking it up. I'm picking it up on Friday. This is our probably most anticipated game of the last several months. Uh, and until God of War probably gets announced a date, uh, probably my most anticipated game of this year. Uh, Dave, your, your thoughts on exciting for Horizon coming out this week? Yeah, I mean, I've been jumping into Horizon uh, Zero Dawn. Uh, my wife played through it, platinum the game um, when it, you know, when we first got the PlayStation Four um, a few years ago. It, you know, it was one of the games that was the reason I bought the PlayStation Four. Um, there, there were a lot of exclusive games. You know, Spider Man, Last of Us, Uncharted, uh, God of War. That were that, that was the reason I bought the PlayStation instead of the Xbox back then. Of course, now I, you know, I talk about all the time. I think the Xbox has an amazing platform in the, the Game Pass model, and especially the fact that you can pretty much play most Xbox games without even having it. Anyway, all of that is a side note. Uh, so I've been playing through Horizon Zero Dawn, probably put a dozen hours into it, maybe a couple dozen over the past couple weeks, uh, and just really trying to get caught up before the new game comes out. Uh, although I, right now my wife is holding off on playing the new game because she's right in the middle of uh, Girl Scout cookie season. So, uh, you know... Girl Scout cookies are, are a big deal in my house this time of year. Uh, my daughter sells a lot of them. So if you need a Girl Scout cookie hookup, uh, call me and I'll get you on the phone <laughs> with my daughter. But um, anyway, West. I'm excited about Horizon Forbidden West. The reviews seem good. Uh, yeah. And it looks like it's you know, a gorgeous, gorgeous game, which is what we were expecting. Yeah. No, you, you, you don't expect anything less from a, a Sony first party studio. They do not have many misses when it comes to games. Uh, finally, the last big one, and this one may not, you know, be out there for everybody. It's a very specific, you know, sort of game, but Elden Ring obviously is coming February 24th. Lots of people very excited for it. I've been listening to the previews. I'm very um, jealous because the game sounds incredible, uh, but I am just not, I, I keep trying to be a, you know, Dark Souls souls type player and i just cannot get it i it doesn't click with me it doesn't well, click with I me think dark souls is for people that like games on hard mode i've been trying to do better on the podcast i've been uh, trying maybe, to do better i'll try to put a link in the in the uh, notes when i post this uh to our question of is it okay to play games on easy mode because uh, i know i've given you a hard time for that all the time although i'm playing through horizon on easy mode right now just to get through it um but yeah i, I think it's one of those that if you like really hard games uh, and you like the extreme challenge, uh, I will say that, again, as a graphics enthusiast myself, uh, man, that game Elden Ring just looks stellar. I mean, it just blows me away when I see the graphics. Yeah, I think a lot of people have already said if it's going to be their game of the year um, because people have gotten like a final preview build in the last week or so. So interested to see that one. That comes out February 24th. So if you're interested in that, make sure you guys pick that up. That's another rated M for mature game. So again, uh, violence and all sorts of things in that one. So make sure you are looking at that before purchasing games for younger people. Other than that, uh, that is all for the news this week. A little bit lighter on the news, but we have a fun main topic this week as we will be discussing the book of boba fett and how it relates a little bit on topic wise uh to what is said in the bible but uh we'll get that coming right after the break I can't hear Dave. He's muted. Russ. There you are. Russ. Russ couldn't hear me. I was <laughs> muted. Maybe we'll cut that part. Maybe not. Uh, but today we're going to be talking about the book of Boba Fett yep. and uh, the, which is not a book for those of you who don't know anything about it. Uh, it is a TV show that's on Disney plus and uh, Russ, you're going to give us a brief synopsis. So for those who have never heard anything about it, don't know anything about it and haven't seen it, uh, give us a good spoiler free synopsis of what this yep. show is about. 
Uh, I'll do my best to keep it completely spoiler free, obviously, to even know that the show exists. It kind of does spoil a little bit The Mandalorian. Uh, so do know that you might be a little bit spoiled for The Mandalorian. But uh, yes, so End of Mandalorian set up the book of Boba Fett. Boba Fett is back from the dead, so to speak. Uh, and he has taken over control of one of the areas, cities in Tatooine that was run by Jabba the Hutt. And he is now dealing with what life is like being a mob boss, a gang boss, whatever you want to call it in the seedy underbelly that is Tatooine Um, and all of the trials and tribulations he has to go through from building up from nothing to having a militia, a, you know, following to then gaining the respect and uh, understanding of all the people of the place that he lives and whether or not he is their true leader uh, which kind of brings us to the idea and what we we were thinking of when we thought about this and really the overarching theme of what the Book of Boba Fett actually was. Dave, how would you relate this and what were some of the things that we've talked about and discussed when discussing the Book of Boba Fett? Yeah, I think um, the interesting thing for me is to see this character who... Uh, takes over from Jabba the Hutt and and basically is immediately placed in this position of power. And we see within the first episode that he is not uh, choosing to go about leading in the same way that Jabba the Hutt was, right? Yep. People are saying, well, that's not really how it's done here. You know, you've got to do it this way. And he says, I plan to do things differently. And so from the get go, we get this image of a person who does not want to lead by strength and power, but instead wants to lead by uh, following, right? He wants to lead through service. He wants to lead through um, through being a servant to the people and doing whatever is going to be best for the people. Uh, and so we, we also see this massive uh, character arc of how he became that way. Uh, also, I guess, spoiler alert uh, that Boba Fett's not dead. If you've seen the uh, end of episode <laughs> Episode six, where he gets eaten by the what's the sand creature's name? The, uh, the sand s- hole. Sarlacc. The Sarlacc. Sarlacc. Pit. Yep, the Sarlacc pit. Yep. So, um, but I, you know, I think we get this image of a of a leader who says, you know, I know that right now everybody expects people to lead through force and power and killing, and, and even there's a number of places where he's given the option to kill and lead through fear, and instead he says, that's not how I'm going to do it. And, and everybody around him is saying, like, you shouldn't do that. Like, even his friend who in the show, uh, uh, Finnick, uh, she just keeps saying, like, you can't keep doing this. Like, we're not going to be in power very long. Like, you need to show at least a little bit of power over these people. Otherwise, they think you're a joke. And sure enough, you see that. And again, first episode. So really not spoilers. I mean, throughout the show. But first episode, he is challenged numerous times right out the gate of you know, people trying to attack him, people trying to do this, people not, you know, respecting him. Um, so many different things that had he just at one point shown just a little ounce of power, it may have stopped that from happening. And instead, it is this slow burn of what does it look like if I decide to change the status quo, if I decide to lead in a different way and be respected rather than feared. That, I think, is the biggest thing that he is looking for, is full respect and beloved by his people rather than fear and um, just this idea that at any moment I could be injured or hurt or killed or have something happen to me. Um, It's it's that idea of the fear versus um, the respect. Uh, Dave, wh- where, where does that relate and what, what are we talking about today as far as uh, the Bible goes? So I think the the place that I really see this is is in Christ, right? I mean, Christ is uh, a lot of people expect that Christ is going to come and lead the Israelite people through uh, military victory, through power, through uh, leading as a king. Uh, people expect that he's going to be, uh, you know, to trample those who have oppressed the uh, people who are currently oppressed, and and people almost expect that because they've been oppressed so much that they're going to be able to become the new oppressors and oppress their former oppressors. Um, And Jesus says, no, Uh, you know, if somebody slaps you, don't slap them back, right? Give them your other cheek. Uh, If somebody hates you, 
love them. Uh, and so what yeah. I really want to get into and talk about today is uh, is actually from Paul's writing to the Galatians. Uh, and I really want to just bring in this quote from Galatians 5.13, um, right, where he talks about freedom and the idea that Christ has freed us uh, from the ways of our past, from our sins, that the Christ has brought us a new life, that we no longer have to live the way that we were living before. But, but... Don't just take that and say, well, you know, I've got this get out of jail free card and now I'm going to go do whatever I want. Yeah. Um, so let me read you the verse here from Galatians 5.13. It says, for you were called to freedom, brothers and sisters, only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for self-indulgence, but through love become slaves to one another. For the whole law is summed up in a single commandment. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. If, however, you bite and devour one another, take care that you are not consumed by one another. Right. And so uh, there's also some biting and devouring going on in uh, Boba <laughs> Fett, but we're not going to get into that today. But I do think that that here we've got Boba Fett who has been given his freedom, right? He is he's no longer a bounty hunter. He's no longer a, a massive killer. I mean, there's still some people that get killed in the show, just letting you know. Um, but, you know, that's that's not his goal. Um, yeah. And so he is taking that to heart and, and really not going out and using his freedom for an opportunity for self-indulgence, but instead – learning to love one another, right? Learning to lead through love. Um, and I just think that's a, an incredible example for us, uh, especially for those of us who get to points in our lives where we realize that we have certain power, right? Whether that's uh, financial power because you uh, are, are doing better off than others, uh, whether that's um, some sort of uh, employment power, you know, maybe you're in a position of, uh, of power in, in your employment setting, um, you know, if you find yourself in a position of power, don't use that power for self-indulgence. Instead, use it to serve one another. So, uh, Russ, what are your thoughts on this? Well, and, and I think I, I even take it in a different way a little bit, but it's the idea that, you know, people are expected to do certain things, right? There are certain events. There are certain things that happen where you are expected to then respond in a specific way. And if you can break that cycle, break the cycle of the normal um, reaction, the normal way of treating things, treating people, you know, when somebody cuts you off, what is the normal response to that? Okay. If somebody, you know, cuts in front of you at the grocery store, what is the normal response that most people are going to say? Well, that's actually okay. They kind of warranted. They deserved it. It's, you know, harsh it's it's responding poorly it's not you know being saying the right things it's not showing love it's showing the opposite and so just like in the show where it was you know him breaking this cycle of this is how people rule over others and it's the fear and it's the violence and it's the the hate and all this other stuff well what happens if we start showing love like will we get a, an immediate response of great probably not in most experience, in most situations, you're not you're not going to get the the kind of response you want right away. But the more you do it, people will start to think, "Oh, this person is different. This person is behaving in a much different way." And why is that? Why are they acting in love? Why are they showing so much caring and empathy towards me? Like I don't deserve it. Why are they doing it? And that's where you know the idea of really showing who Christ is through our actions really comes into play. Um, and I think. The, the series does a great job of showing that throughout is he's constantly told you need to do things this way. Like you don't understand. You are not going to be a leader. You are not going to be able to succeed. And while it's very difficult throughout the entire show, you know, he's able to build up this power and build up this leadership. Um, and, and, and that's the most powerful and beautiful thing I think that we can get from this. And especially that verse from, from Paul and the way that he's talking to the Galatians is the importance to just love one another. And if, if we do just attack each other, we'll just end up eating each other alive. And that's what happens right now in the world is we're in such a place where everybody just is so toxic to one another that we are just eating each other alive. Um, and the idea is to break that cycle and to show love and compassion just like Christ did. And I think, again, we have a great example here now in this show. Highly recommend um, that if you're a Star Wars fan, you watch it. It's on Disney+, Plus, which means, for, you know, for the most part, it is pretty appropriate. There's not like gore and, you know, hard 
hardcore violence. There's obviously some violence, but Disney Plus does a good job of making shows that most people in the family can watch. Obviously, there's going to be some things that are frightening for younger children. Um, There are aliens and different things that happen. Um, But if you're good with most Star Wars stuff, uh, I would say it's just a continuation of that. Um, so if that's something you and your family want to sit around and watch and get to experience and see, um, you know, you could have a nice, great discussion. Uh, I would turn this back on to others who are listening to this podcast or who we may talk to. If you want to answer it down in the comments below, um, maybe some questions that you guys can answer that kind of makes you think about what we're talking about today. Um, and that being, you know, what's an example of a time that either you didn't appropriately respond or maybe you did and what kind of you know reception did you get from that you know what was it a time where you were you know in a line at starbucks and they messed up your drink and rather than getting upset like everybody else you were compassionate to the barista and they were like oh well thank you i've been having such a horrible day and like that made my day thank you i'm so sorry that it here here's something nice in return like what what is an experience or an example of something that you've gone through and what that looked like um And, you know, maybe another question would be also, what is, you know, some way you want to change the way you behave? What is a way that you want to maybe in the next week or two show some compassion or love to somebody else, a stranger, um, anyone else around you? What are some ideas that you guys out there have uh, to show those type of things? Um, And again, share them in the comments so that other people can see them. Um, Share our podcast so other people can hear the questions that we have and, and the ideas that we're talking about. And Dave, what are you, what are kind of summation and conclusion to uh, this discussion about Boba Fett and Galatians? Yeah, I would just say, um, no matter what, love one another. And I know it's hard um, because there are all sorts of places in our lives that we feel justified in our anger or our frustrations, uh, or we feel like, you know, whatever it is that we're, uh, you know, somebody cut us off. And so we feel justified and uh, waving with a single finger or something like that. And uh, instead, I, I would just challenge everybody to find the way to be the, the, person who can restrain from that kind of uh, action. And I would also just say, you know, where are the places in your life that uh, you think that perhaps by showing love instead of hate, by showing compassion instead of power, uh, that you might be able to bring about a Christ-like change in your world? And how might that change uh, actually eventually change the whole world? So that's my challenge to you today. Uh, And before we close out, I just want to remind everybody uh, and say thank you to all of our Patreon support Supporters and uh, remind everybody the links up there, patreon.com slash church for gamers. Thank you all for your support. And we will see you next week on our podcast uh, when we're going to talk about next week's news and hopefully uh, give you a little summary of uh, how, how we're doing on, you know, our games we're playing. So, all right, we'll see you next week. Thanks again for tuning in and God bless you guys. God bless.